how to use pricing psychology and other tactics to close online sales. These are the best kept secrets on how the top online companies get their customers to buy. Let's, Let's dive, dive into in. it. Go. Boom. What's up, everyone? Sean Azar here with Matt Skopak. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Deep Dive, episode 21, 21, where we usually dive into businesses such that you can start implementing their marketing and business strategies and start scaling your business. However, I uh, wanted to do something different because this is so important. You know, just little aspects of changing your price, understanding human behavior, hu uh, pricing psychology, and how it could really dramatically help increase your sales. It has done it for both of our businesses. It has done it with all the brands, well, I, these are the tactics we've actually- Every brand that we've gone through probably uses one or all of these tactics to drive customer sales. And we're about 20 episodes in, this is 21, so we've done 20 brands, yep. really dove into them, so we really understood a lot of what they're doing, mm -hmm. and this is stuff that we really think these are, these tactics from everything we've um, saw, that these pricing tactics really work, it's, there was a lot of commonality so, amongst them. But with that said, uh, let's, it's time let's, to jump in. let's jump in. Let's go. Number one, creating an artificial time constraint to create a sense of urgency. And this is something that mostly all the sites that we've uh, gone on to for all the brands that we've done do. And there's multiple ways to do this. The biggest thing that we've seen is a timer. And this is in multiple uses, either in the email that they send you or either on the website when you put something in your cart, you will see a timer comes up and basically says, this item has been reserved for you for 10 minutes. And now what does this do and what is the psychology behind it? So when and, you, that, and you're getting a code for like a discount. Depends. If it's the um, artificial time constraint, that would be, almost be like a limited time offer or something, which we'll talk about. This is more of just a timer that pops up either on the sale, on the bottom, or when you place something into your cart. So basically this timer pops up and a person puts it in their cart and they see, hey, nine minutes and 35 seconds, 34, and the timer starts to go down. And then their head being says, wow, I, I do not want to lose this product or I don't want to lose this opportunity to get this deal. So I better purchase this, which is good for the company because you might have not purchased it. And for the customer, they think they're getting a great deal. So it's a win-win. But what this does is it creates a sense of urgency, a artificial time constraint, thinking that you need to purchase that item in this exact time. Because they may so, lose it. They may lose the deal or the product because exactly. it might get sold you out. Might just, you might leave the website or you might do something else or get distracted and then may never make that purchase. So this is tactic number one. These companies create an artificial uh, time constraint that people think they have to buy in to get that item or that discount. Awesome, I love that. And I actually have a question on that one. Yes. Um, if the timer didn't run out, what if the product ran out of stock, right? Usually and they put a reserve on it. As so they do. So the reserve is actually. Yeah. Usually it, it, it is. It is. is accurate. Okay. Yeah. And if it so is. That was not, important. I was just realizing, like, because you know, if you're like. That, I feel like that would be really bad luck. I mean, it could. <laughs> it could. It could happen. I yeah. guess too. If they don't actually reserve that item. Yeah. Which that, I think probably supply chain would be really hard to actually reserve that item. So it could happen. But yeah then you'll be getting an email from customer service about, hey, we ran this product. There we go. All right, <laughs> uh, number two, create bundles or multiple pricing options. This is huge. It has helped my business dramatically um, and it has in helped increase their average order value. So when you're creating bundles, there's a win for the customer and there's also a win for you. Um, for the customer, when you're doing bundles, you wanna say, hey, look, if you purchase all these items together, you get a discount of 30% versus if you purchase them individually. So you provide this bundle, whatever it is, like for my brand, uh, I'm doing with canvases, I show three different bundles. They purchase that product, they save 25% versus purchasing just three um, other art, like art pieces mm -hmm. in that size. So that's huge, that's, that's gonna help again, increase your order, order value. You're, you're giving them um, a, some sort of saving, they're saving, they're getting a good deal out of it, and you're also getting an awesome deal as well because one, increase your um, average order value, you could then ship these items all together, so it's helping you reduce costs and so forth. So create bundles, multiple pricing options, which is gonna help, again, help you drive more sales. Yeah, I love it. Bundles are a huge part of everyone's business, and they need to be a part of yours. Add-on items, bundles, great way to sell multiple things and increase the AOV 
of, uh, of your customer orders. So uh, number two, make use of holiday sales and limited time offers. And this is now one of the big things happening within the last five to 10 years is we know that these big sales, the Black Friday, or now every holiday, July 4th, Labor Day, Memorial Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, even the holidays which are more generic to maybe a brand like um, uh, I think we were talking about today. What, what holiday, like a women's holiday or a, do a national dog day. If those holidays can be used by your brand, leverage them. But why are these important? Now every customer on these holidays knows that these companies, especially online companies, are gonna be doing a sale. So when they know that a holiday is coming, another again, we always talk about this, people want a deal and people do not want to lose the opportunity to buy something at a discount, which they usually will use anyway. So they know during these holidays, like Labor Day or Black Friday, they are going to be logging onto the sites, especially brands that they like or items that they may need and making purchases because they want a discount. And we're gonna go through two examples that we've done in the past. Gymshark, they do a great job. They only do two major sales a year. So the Black Friday one, they actually take down the site and like we talked about my first point, they put a timer on their website and that's all you can do is see the timer creating a sense of urgency because people now are gonna get ready to probably spend a lot of money and buy numerous things on the site. And then for Sugar and Kush, we leverage like Memorial Day and Labor Day weekend and things like that where you can see here and we create a whole almost uh, ad that's targeted for that exact holiday. So these are big deals and these are things that you definitely need to leverage. And all these points that I'm talking about, I wanna really talk about a, uh, a strategy real, real quick. And this is based on all sales or all techniques, it's called loss aversion. And this is a example of loss aversion. So loss aversion is basically saying that when people lose something, they feel twice, studies prove that they show twice as emotional about losing it compared to when they get something. So I get a $300 bottle of wine given to me. If I lose that bottle of wine, I'm gonna feel twice as bad as when I first got that. And that concept right there is how all these companies, it doesn't matter online or retail, drive people to make sales. So do some research on loss aversion and think about the techniques and what we talked about and how it relates to it. I'm really hoping my next point is an adjacent point to that is not repetitive. Um, it's different, and, but yours, yours, mine was the overall, I think yours drills down into it a little bit deeper and yeah. really helps people get to that point. Yeah, so number four is create a sales schedule throughout the year. Like in, when it's January, right? Have a sales schedule for all of 2021, for next year. Yep. You need dates for January, February, March, April. So don't just wait, like you were saying, how Gymshark just waits for two holidays, and they did it. They did it right, I guess, but they're losing out on a lot of deals as well. But they also have built a, such a strong brand exactly. that they're always selling out mm -hmm. um, as well. It's not the case for a lot of us. So building a, a strong um, sales schedule is huge because these are the seasons or these days that people buy. For instance, yeah. you know, in September, people have back to school sale. Yep. right? People have fall sale. Um, one of my clients has end of summer sale or there's a fall sale or home office sale because it's a home decor uh, um, area. You could have, let me actually read some of the things I have wrote down actually for October. And then, and then what I think Sean's saying, just to add on, it's very important too because it, you can't just create a sale like in a day or a week or whatnot. It takes a lot of time to actually create the promos for the sale, do the coding, the discounts and things like that. So a schedule really helps you get ahead and be prepared to know when the sale is coming and what you need. Because you got to update all your marketing materials. You got to exactly. update your web banner, your email marketing stuff, and everything, and your social media. Yep. So everything has to uh, voice accordingly. And so your graphics should align with that holiday. So with Sugar and Kush, we have our pink drip. For July Fourth, we actually put a American flag logo in the drip. So that's that, that's an exact example. Just don't be generic and put in forty percent. Get get. I guess more detailed and leverage these days. Leverage these days. Like in October, especially in October, people are more likely to buy because people are sitting on their couch. It's getting cold out. Yep. You know, between like bad weather and like people want to sit home and just buy stuff. So take advantage of like Halloween. Um, I believe there's also like if you're in the food business, World Food Day and so forth. Yeah. And February, there's Valentine's Day, but there's more to it too. There's Valentine's Day. I was reading International Cat Day or yeah. the Oscar Awards. I mean, you could somehow figure out a way to um, incorporate. Yeah. that into your sales schedule, but also based on your region, and maybe you could do an anniversary sale. 
like your two year anniversary since you launched type of sale as well. So these are good things to implement into your e-commerce sales calendar. Absolutely, that's a great point. Great add on to mine. Number five, use anchor pricing to create a discount on every item. So the first thing is, what is anchor pricing? So you can, let's use Amazon for an example. You go to an Amazon item. I think I'm gonna show uh, on the YouTube video, AirPods on Amazon. And they're gonna have a little price, the MSRP, and then they're gonna have a dash through it. And then they're gonna show you a lower price in underneath. And that is called anchor pricing. And that's what basically a lot of online companies do to make you believe that you're getting a deal when you purchase this item. And that's what Amazon does too. And what this does is, I think we were reading stats before, I think 64% of the customers did, uh, want some type of discount when they are buying, buying an item today or they will not purchase, right? 64%. Yeah, 64 do not make a purchase until they are on discounts. That's it. So that being said, when you have this anchor pricing, someone automatically thinks they're getting a great deal because it's been discounted from the MSRP. Is it sometimes discount? Absolutely. It could it not be discounted? Possibly. But the leverage and the psychology behind it makes the consumer believe that they're getting a better price than what actually it's been marketed to for or someone else has paid and that this creates, again, a sense of urgency or a loss of urgency because they don't want to lose that deal to make that purchase. So on your website, if you don't have it, you need to create a anchor pricing, show your MSRP or a higher price, cross it out. Put a price below. Well, in the crossing out, Shopify does that. So just FYI, mm -hmm. you, there's uh, in Shopify at least, there's price and compare at price. So it's like compare, at, I believe compare at price is the old price and the new price is the sale price. Yep. And it does the discount for you. So it does like the slash and so forth. But it doesn't, um, so you got to uh, do customization such that it does. Yes, and a lot, let's, let me jump back. A lot of the points that we are talking to are either you can do through either Shopify or there are other apps that will help you to leverage and to do some of these pricing things like either red tags or anchors or um, there are some of the other items that we talked about or the timers and things like that. That's another software app. So also I wanna point a couple takeaways on this, um, which is very important, which I've learned that I had to customize on my website is when people are adding to cart, when you have that anchor price, mm -hmm. when you have that sale price, right? You wanna calculate the total um, saved based on the deal they got. Yeah. So if they put like two items in the cart that are at sale price at $50, but the original price was 100, they have two items, they're saving another 100 bucks. That's it. So you're, you're telling, you're calculating that price. At least that was easy math, but yep. um, if for your prices, depending on what it is, you wanna show them, because it'll be a bunch of items they could be buying and how much they could be saving at that point of time, yes. because the sale could end tomorrow or by midnight. So they wanna save that big. No. So make sure you're, you're providing that calculation and that will help, that's a great point, because that will help get the customer through the cart to the final purchase. Because we all know there's multiple entry points or funnels, getting the customer to your site, having them add something to the cart, processing the payment or processing the order once they put something in the cart. So that that helps alleviate, if I, if I have items in the cart and I see that I'm saving $98 or $102 on all the items in my cart, I'm gonna be like, wow, I'm getting a great deal. Let me go ahead and let me purchase this. Another thing I've seen that worked really well, that when you're running Facebook ads, if you have your catalog synced into Facebook or your, your Facebook synced to your Shopify or your uh, whatever, however it's synced, right? When it's pulling in prices, make sure, sometimes you gotta figure out, you gotta have the developer help you with this because there's a lot of problems with sometimes the syncing, is when you're running ads, especially dynamic product ads, I'm getting a little technical here for some of you that really understand this, bear with me. When you're running dynamic product, product ads, this is ads that are basically running across your catalog. Say, say someone viewed a product, mm -hmm. right? You can retarget them with that product, right? But then you could set a frame, it's called when you're running this ad, such that it's showing either percentage off or it's calculating the price discount. So it's saying the original price and then underneath it, it like crosses out and it yeah. shows the price and it's dynamic. You're not updating that manually, it's already, you're, it's doing yep. that for you for running that type of ad. So make sure you're doing this. I've seen a lot of sales increase um, for my clients by doing that. Yep. So that, that's definitely huge. All the retailers huge. do this now, especially with clothing. I know sneakers or like Nordstrom's or whatnot, they show like the Dow 1200 or 1500 MSR pre-price and then they drop it down to like 80% off now and still like $500. But that's yep. a great point. I think we're at one more point, right? Number yep. six? Number six, but I think I'm gonna do one more as well. Wow, um, bonus. Yeah, so number six is the power of nines. Uh, this actually, I've seen this with a lot of brands. 
I'm sure you've seen it, 19.99 versus $20. 99 $99.99 versus $100. People tend to, and this is actually what I was reading. I didn't really understand it. I've done it because I've seen all, all these brands do it. I'm like, it does work. And it makes sense. I just didn't understand why until people were like, until I read some of these studies. He's like, again, people are used to reading from left to right, right? Yeah. So when they see that $99, they're thinking, oh, it's $99 versus $100, right? That's a, it's a bigger bigger awesome. number. It's, 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 um, and that number 99 cents, it just sounds like you're getting a better value. And actually did the opposite because of this, when you actually end with a zero, they're saying is now it's it's now more of a prestigious product. Is you're adding that quality or some sort. Again, this is what I've read on that part, but I know the 99 has worked dramatically, especially when I've decreased my when a lot of my sale prices, starting prices uh, for like a small canvas is like ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Yeah. So and I it works. It, it works. Um, so try that. Implement that with your prices. Don't do like fourteen seventy nine. Do fourteen ninety nine. Mm -hmm. So and that's doing all this. When you say play with pricing, guys, make sure that this is a general statement. Make sure that you're pricing things so that you can make a enough profit to basically keep yourself in business and cover all your costs, all the shipping and things like that. I mean, you can always make yourself a price and sell something at. And everything is experimental. Selling. You have to yeah. experiment in testing your prices. You have to keep changing them. Um, consistently, like you got to see what works and what doesn't. You gotta if your if your product is also not unique, you got to find ways. Especially if you're selling something that everyone else is selling. That's it. Then you're in trouble. But you got to be competitive. And how can you be competitive? You obviously got to be at the lowest price. You got to have the best customer service. You got to provide some sort of extra value on top of the product. I think you need uh, so all three. So forth. Yeah. three. So you got to do all that. Definitely, it's gonna. Be yeah. helpful, especially not like know where your product fits in the overall market. Exactly like Sean said, are you going to be more of a value product? Are you a higher value? Are you a, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A fancier or more luxury brand? What is your benefit? And then based off on how you brand it, that will determine the pricing that you should use. So that's all that goes into pricing as well. Yeah, and I'm going to give you a number seven. This is I love this because I mean it's kind of common sense, but it's not. Color psychology and pricing. Red is meant that ready if you see a red tag it's it's some sort of urgency it gives that human behavior that human mindset it's like oh this either this is a great deal or just yeah. some things that i might lose this deal and so forth which adds on to yeah. you know artificial time cancer, some red constraints so when you're slashing out your prices make sure you that's in red um or when you're trying to promote a sale it's in red when you go into fashion nova's site right now in this day which i'll uh, I screenshotted, but you'll see it all the time when you have these big sales, it's in red, red, red. When you see clearance, red. Again, that is human behavior. And there's a lot more in terms of you're in an e-commerce space. It's not this video we're gonna talk about, is understanding colors um, and how they evoke human behavior. It's really interesting. And human um, emotion, yeah, yeah, it's like what black can do, what gold does, and what, you know, it's, it's all different. So understanding that is actually just thinking the basics can help you really in a long way. So, um, do you have anything to add? That's it. I think we're good. Guys, I Lots hope you like points. this episode. Um, There's a lot of information here. I hope you like that we, you know, sometimes we like to uh, pivot a little bit and, you know, really think that if something's going to help the audience, um, you know, helped us a lot, that we share it with you as well. So if you liked it, give us a review um, on iTunes, Spotify. We're now on uh, Amazon Music. We have a podcast there, mm -hmm. so which is great. Uh, so give us a five-star rating, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe as well. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below or tweet us. We got at mscopac or at m... I keep forgetting it. At mscopac. There's no underscore. No. Okay, there's no underscore. At mscopac and at Sean underscore Hazari. I need to get the non underscore. Um, anyway, awesome. Hope you guys liked it. I don't have a pen throw. I do. And see Hope you next you week. Bye.